Hello, and welcome back to The Library Show. I'm your host, Mike Pletsley, and today I'm joined by my co-host, Holly Browning, and we're gonna talk homeschool resources. And later on, Holly will interview Marissa about the Daughters of the American Revolution, and then Miss Connie is back with her story time, ever popular story time. But first, I'm here with my co-host, Holly. Holly, welcome. Hello, Mike. What are we talking about today? Well, I thought it would be a great time in the year to talk about uh, homeschool resources. Yes. So I know in a previous show, we did um, our educational databases that we had mm -hmm. online for homeschool. So today I thought we'd talk a little bit about what the library has to offer in terms of physical books that people can check out. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me, you say it's the right time of year with kids going back to school and yep. all. What do we offer for homeschoolers at the library? So we have, um, Definitely, so definitely online at lebanonlibrary.org, we have a lot of the educational databases. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking for something um, for parents, you know, to check out, you know, how do I want to start homeschooling or, you know, things of that nature, you can um, check out these great resources that I have. Well, tell me, with the pandemic and all, has homeschool interest increased? It has. It has. And I just, I actually looked on a website and it was the census website and oh. it talked about how homeschool each year has grown. Um, each year, I guess it said by 3%. Really? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's steadily increasing. Hmm. And um, it, there are more children being homeschooled than ever before. And that is, I mean, there's a few reasons for that. Um, you know, a lot of it being the more diverse mm -hmm. um, programs and curriculums mm -hmm. that they have nowadays. I mean, when homeschool, when the, the movement started, it was with the early 1980s, mm -hmm. and it was kind of started by the, the evangelical Christian crowd, and mm -hmm. they, you know, with, um, they wanted to, um, you know, keep religion and that in, you know, in their studies. Sure. So it kind of got, homeschool kind of got put in a small box and, mm -hmm. and people kind of categorized it and, and that sort of thing. But, you know, it, it started to slowly grow mm -hmm. and more and more um, curriculums and different programs and, and co-ops were, were born out of, you know, the advancing movement. And right. now it's, it's really great because there's just so much out there. There's yeah. just, you know, it's, it's, it's really nice. There's so many resources and they actually did a study recently that said um, religion was actually only 40% of the, or the reason that people homeschool really? nowadays. Yeah, oh my. isn't that? It's, it's changed yeah. quite a bit. So it's definitely more diverse than the small, you know, box it was put into. Right. Um, and the pan with the pandemic, that was also another, you know, a big reason, a big jump, I guess you could sure. say. Um, new laws and regulations are still being passed right now to this mm -hmm. day um, that you know some parents might be happy with others are not happy with mm -hmm. um, so they they have tried to find uh, ways that maybe they could homeschool that the previously you know they thought that they could not do that they had to be home full-time eight to five to you know be able to provide homeschool for their family right. and they're realizing you know with all these different options that that's not always the case right so yeah now you come at this from a bit of an expert standpoint because you homeschool yourself am i correct i do i do so i'm on the third year of homeschooling with my son okay. um, and he's in um, elementary grades and we love it i mean it's we've made it work for us good um, i had a lot of help in the beginning i mean that's one thing about the homeschool community is that there you'll always find people that are willing to help you get started and that's good. another thing you can you know connect to a local group um, there's there's a lot of different ones out there and they will be more than willing to to help you on the process of you know what you need to do and mm -hmm. turn in and my sister actually homeschooled started homeschooling before I did because oh. she has you know an older son so you know she helped me get started and it's funny now that we you know we talk about how we homeschool we're completely different in the way that we do things uh -huh. you know yeah. but we both homeschool so that's interesting yeah. well it goes to show there are different avenues and paths right well just like a teacher has different teaching styles it's right. the same, same you know the yeah. same so what do you have for us today in terms of resources? Okay, so oh, I do want to say, I didn't get to say this um, earlier, one of the biggest reasons that people are um, also um, turning to homeschool is now they can look back and they can see that um, when you compare homeschool students mm -hmm. or children that have been homeschooled to public school students mm -hmm. or private school students, they are scoring the same or above average on ACT, SATs. Is so that right? there are results that yes. you can see now. now so now that that's it's a been big some years. right. So that's um, you know made a big difference. That's great. Mm -hmm. 
Well, tell me what you have for us. So, okay, so the first book that I have, I thought this would be a great, you know, first overall pick. Mm -hmm. um, and this is The Everything Guide to Homeschooling. And I thought this would be a great first pick because it, and you know, it's kind of umbrella type. It encompasses everything. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very popular series, as you know. Mm -hmm. You know, the Everything Guide. They have the Everything Guide for everything. 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 Right. everything. There you go. <laughs> um, and it covers things from, you know, making schedules for your day, mm -hmm. picking curriculums. It has a section on special needs children. Oh, um, nice. You can, you know, homeschooling special needs children. Mm -hmm. Um, and the thing that I like about the everything guide is the fact that it's so easily accessible uh, and it's very easy, to, you know, finding things right. and um, chapters are easily labeled, you know, things, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the neat things is each chapter contains um, things they call e-facts or e-questions uh -huh. and it's kind of like a summary of what you're reading or the you know the the main point of what you're supposed to right. be getting and you know hey you, that's yeah. a little extra help there that right. you have. so i mean it's just it's a good overall pick for when sure. you're you're starting out and you want to know more about it right mm -hmm. right yeah what else do you have what's what's so, your next favorite my next favorite and this is um a really really neat pick here it's 101 top picks for homeschool curriculum it sounds a little, um, <laughs> um, a little intricate there with 101, but it's it's really nice um, because, you know, nowadays with how much homeschool has grown, the, yeah. the fact that there are 101 picks for curriculum, you it know, tells that you tells something. you that tells yeah. you something, yeah. yeah. But this is when you are trying to decide, you know, well, what am I going to teach? What right. what do I do? Where do right. I even start? Mm -hmm. And there are so many different companies um, that have their own um, basically curriculums for the year and, and their teachers, their educators, you know, and they, mm -hmm. they've put together something for you. Right. Or, you know, like a lot of parents do, they will pick and choose, you know, well, this company is very strong in math or mm -hmm. this company is strong in science and mm -hmm. they will, you know, kind of put things together and make their own. You can do right. either. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the times you can you can do that or you can just go straight through and get a whole a whole curriculum set from one company. So there's some flexibility there. There there is. And then, then this tells you kind of like um, it goes by learning styles mm -hmm. as well. So, you know, if your child learns a specific way, you're gonna wanna look and see, you know, what what does this this company have to offer right. and that that sort of thing. Right. Right. That's good. So I liked that because it has, you know, just so many different options that right. you can look into. Right. Yeah. So those are two good ones to start with. And then mm -hmm. what if you're ready to move on beyond that? Do you have some intermediate well, resources? Well, I have, yes, I have this one. The next one is a little bit more in depth. Mm -hmm. um, it's called the Homeschool, Homeschooling Handbook. And it says how to make homeschooling simple, affordable, fun, and effective. Mm. Okay. So those are also, you know, a lot of parents ask, well, I don't have hundreds of dollars to buy a curriculum, right. you know, that sort of thing. Right. Um, and this book kind of goes um, a little bit more um, in depth on kind of how to, you know, if you have a budget, right. how to keep it simple, you know, affordable. Um, it go, it, it's, I say it's really good for like the person that can be easily overwhelmed. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, it kind of helps. Okay. Just breathe take simple. A, take a yes. Yeah. But it goes, you know, a little bit more in depth than the, um, the everything guide. Cause it's more kind of just a, the, right. you know, umbrella part of it. Yeah. Right. So this one, you know, is a really, um, good pick and i liked uh what it says in, in it it says you know you do not ha need to have a room full of educational toys and books you don't have to have a library in your house to homeschool right. i think that's one of the reasons why so many people still resist mm -hmm. they don't feel they have the adequate needs and right. now is the best time than ever you know there's so many resources right. that you don't even know about right. so yeah. yeah so don't be daunted Right, right, definitely not, um, and and you know that might be the book to read for yeah. that. Yeah. Well, what else do you have? I see, you have some more selections, and I do. So this next one that I have um, is actually um, you know kind of grade specific, mm -hmm. and um, not everybody starts in the middle. Um, you know, some people do. Some people decide. You know, well, we're gonna you know, try homeschooling in the middle of, you know, middle school or things like right. that. They start at the very beginning, preschool. Mm -hmm. um, so this book was awesome. And it's called The Ultimate Kindergarten Prep Guide. Ah. But it's not, it's not just for homeschoolers, though. So this book is awesome 
for any student, for any you know child that's going into kindergarten. Mm -hmm. This is, um, it's so fun because it literally has, uh, it's packed with educational activities mm -hmm. that you can do with your preschooler to get them ready for kindergarten. No matter if you're homeschooling or No going matter to if you're homeschooling or not. Okay. So, I mean, and it, it's good for, you know, the homeschool parent, mm -hmm. you know, as well to kind of, you know, take home and see what kind of activities they can do. Sure. So I decided, you know, we need, we need to put that in the list, definitely. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's so simple because it has the step-by-step -step directions mm. and the material list for you nice. that you can just get it set out. And it's not just it's not just arts and crafts. It's not just science. There's games that you know that you that teach children. You know, outside games you can play. Right. I mean, it's just it has everything. Everything they need to know, or they say that they need to know before they, you know, start kindergarten. So it's so. a good prep book for everybody, anybody. R anybody. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So it was really neat. I looked through it, and it's just it. You know, it'll say science activities language arts mm -hmm. and you know it has it all and it you know it'll tell what you know what exactly you're teaching you know right. why you have to do this for kindergarten that right. sort of thing well, good. um it's it's really a, a neat book good that yeah. looks like a good size one too yeah it is what else do you have for us today so um the next book that i have is brilliant i think <laughs> and i just read it this is also a book um that is not just for homeschool children Mm. So this is called Social Skills for Success. Notice it's kind of written in the, um, yeah. Texting the, format? The texting format, mm -hmm. yes. But it's how to give children the skills they need to survive in the modern world, or ah. the, the social skills, I guess okay. you could say. Yes. And how important is this, I think, Very. especially in today's time? Mm -hmm. um, this book also, the reason I picked it for homeschooling is because it addresses the number one question that a lot of homeschooling parents get asked is, well, what do you do about social skills? Yeah. Um, and that um, most seem to think that homeschoolers are kind of completely isolated from, from groups, which right. that can't be farther from the truth nowadays. They have, mm -hmm. like I said, different co-op facilities mm -hmm. where homeschoolers meet together for a day or two mm -hmm. and have classes. Um, we even have one of those in, actually one or two in Lebanon right mm -hmm. now that are really great. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, they have, the YMCA uh, offers homeschooling classes for the homeschoolers to get together. Really? And yeah, they have Spanish, they have music. Oh, huh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So um, there's, oh my gosh, there's so many options. So your child's not going to be isolated. Right. You know, that or, sort of or thing. Or unsocialed. Right. Yeah. And, and this book kind of just... Um, it kind of helps, you know, you when you're one on one with your child, you right. know, ways that you can kind of um, teach them, you mm -hmm. know, better social skills. Like right. the first part of it that I read that I thought was really, really neat was it had um, like an example. It had you coming in and introducing yourself and, you know, kind of making eye contact mm -hmm. and smiling and then you coming in in a different way. And, you know, kind of teaching the child, you know, what's important in a first impression, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. It's, right. it's really, really neat. It's targeted to more 7 through 12 okay. years old. Okay, so, so when they're starting to develop those skills. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And in the book, um, she focuses on five main topics, mm -hmm. and that's confidence, internet savvy, conversation, gratitude, and independence. Wow. And I really liked the independence yes. as well because, you know... I've been told I'm a helicopter mom, and I know there's a lot of helicopter moms out there. Mm -hmm. You've got to back away a little mm -hmm. bit sometimes. Yeah. So I really liked the independence part. Wow. Yeah. And before you were talking about the social skills and how important they are nowadays, and sometimes the kids can get behind their screens and don't that's, have interaction. Yes, and that's exactly personal. yes, that's exactly what she says. Mm -hmm. She said studies are showing that children are losing valuable skills because of the rise of of big tech. Right. So. Right. And you can actually, you can see that yeah, sometimes. You, you really can. Yep. So Sounds like that, that book wants to address that. Yes, and that's why I, I grabbed it, and it's a good one. Good. Mm -hmm. We have one more. I can't wait I to do. hear it. I do, and I saved this one for last because, of course, we're a library. Mm -hmm. So yes. this one is called The Enchanted Hour and the Miraculous Power of Reading Aloud in the Age of Distraction, mm. kind of what we were talking about. Yes. Right. So, I mean, reading aloud, that's, you know, that's something that we promote more than anybody. Right. Um, and this was really, really neat because 
there's a reason why you should, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not just, just and it's not just for fun. Right. So, uh, there, there's so many different, that's what I wanted to start with. Actually, I wanted to start with reading you the, the little blurb that they had here. And it just says, imagine an elixir so strong that a daily dose would make your family smarter, happier, healthier, more successful, and more closely attached. Now imagine that you could have had do that without spending a dime. It all starts with a book, a voice, and a place to sit. Ah. So, and, you know, it kind of tells you how um, the art of reading out loud is actually like an ancient practice, yes. like reading sonnets and, mm -hmm. and poems and mm -hmm. how um, they said Charles Dickens called it the spoken syllable. Mm -hmm. um, and it, she actually has in here um, like the, the brain science and behavioral research about what kind of what goes on in a toddler's brain when you're reading to them. Nice. It's really incredible. And and the, kind of the things that that light up and yeah. it's it's yeah, it's perfect for a library. So Sounds I'm like, like you it. know, and actually this one as well is not just not just homeschool. Right. But um, I myself, especially when they're in the younger grades, you mm -hmm. do a lot of reading. Right. So um, well, the connections in those young brains are enhanced by hearing the book. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, it's, she calls it the fast working antidote to the fractured attention spans um, and the distractions of technology. Yeah. I mean, and what a better way to spend some quality time with your child too than reading a story. Right. You know, right. even when they're a little bit older. Yeah. You know? I think so. one of the neat things about our summer reading program library is if an older sibling reads to a younger, they both get credit for that book. Yes, that is really neat. So that's neat. a neat yes. way to promote that. Yes. So I definitely, you know, had to save that one for last because, yeah. you know, that's our kind of book. That's our kind of book. Right. Yep. Well, neat. Well, you've really give, given us some good resources. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Any final thoughts on homeschooling? I know you do it each day, and I know that some of your friends and others do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You else? know, it's, it's, um, it's great for some families, and it's, you know, some families not so great. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all up to you and, and, and how you want to progress with it. But I think the um, the thing that I would say is if you're wanting to try it out, don't be daunted about it. Right. We have resources, you know, um, there's so many different diverse resources out right. there now. Um, yeah, you just check it out if you're interested. Yeah. yeah. And if anyone is interested, do you mind if we have them come to you at the library? Oh, of course as, they can. Because you're yes. kind of our resident expert on well, this. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. And Miss Connie knows the value of reading too. Absolutely. With, with so Miss Connie's story time, absolutely. Yeah, so. well, neat. Well, thank you for being here. Absolutely. And I know you'll be back after this break to interview Marissa about the daughters of the yep. American Revolution. I will. Otherwise known as DAR. Yep. Thank you. Right, thank you. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school and I didn't do it. My support team never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew who I could become as a person. I've been given an opportunity and I'm just thankful for it. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Hi, welcome back to The Library Show. I'm Holly Browning, and today we're going to be chatting with the Juvenile Services Librarian, Marissa Redenbaugh, about a club that I'm very interested in called the Daughters of the American Revolution. And as you know, on the last uh, couple of episodes, we've talked to a couple different library employees about the clubs and organizations that they belong to. So Marissa is joining us today to talk about Daughters of the American Revolution. So thank you for joining us today, Marissa. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. So this is um, something that I have a lot of interest in because it's, it's history. It's all about mm -hmm. you know, the history of our great nation. So tell us a little bit about what the Daughters of the American Revolution is, or sometimes it's called DAR, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the Daughters of the American Revolution was founded in 1890, and it's headquartered in Washington, D.C. 
There are local chapters all over the country and membership can go through any of those local chapters or you can just be a member at large. Oh really? Yeah. All right. So how did you get involved personally? So I got involved personally, this is kind of a funny story. <laughs> But um, I was watching Gilmore Girls when I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I know. <laughs> and the grandmother and then eventually the granddaughter in the show became super involved in the Daughters of the American Revolution. And I thought it looked like they were having a ton of fun. Yeah. And so I asked my mom, I was like, what is this? And she was like, oh, it's this lineage organization. It's, you know, non-political. It's, you know, focused on historic preservation and veteran military support. And I was like, oh, that would be so cool. Yeah. And she said, well, we're eligible to join. I've just never done the paperwork. Really? And I was like, what? We should do it. And so now we do it. So you actually, <laughs> did you apply together then? Like We did. So okay. we applied, and so she applied first, um, and then I applied under her, because right. when someone is a direct descendant like that, then all I had to do for my application was prove my lineage to my mother. Right. So, so that was kind of, well, that was right. easy for So I then, added yeah. on to her. So um, the organization is geared towards women um, and their genealogy. What yes. are some of the other requirements um, if you're interested in joining? Yeah, so it's any woman 18 years and older. Okay. And you have to prove your direct lineage to an American patriot. Okay. Now, most people believe that that is strictly a man who was a soldier in the American Revolution, Revolutionary War for the side of America. Most people okay. think that's pretty strictly like that's who it is, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which seems pretty limiting. Right. But then you can think about they also accept d direct uh, descendants of people who did patriotic service acts. Really? Yes. Okay, so they didn't actually have to engage in combat. No. Really? So if okay. It, if it was you were required as an American citizen to house British soldiers, if that woman quartered the British soldiers, then she is considered to have done a patriot service because she was burdened by the war. And if you can prove your lineage to her, then that's that's acceptable. I didn't even know that. I thought, for some reason, I thought they had to be male. No, like it can be male a female. Ancestors. I didn't it can be a know. female descendant, wow. which is really cool. That is really neat. Yeah, yeah I did not know that. Okay. Um, so, okay, what happens if you have no idea if you descend from <laughs> an American patriot of any sort? Um, are there people available to help in that regard? Like, can they help you search? Yes, yeah, so each chapter locally has a registrar as their title within okay. the chapter. And the registrar, which is my mother's position, okay. um, helps facilitate people who are interested in becoming a member and helping them look at whatever genealogy they know. Sometimes it may just be, I know myself and my parents, mm -hmm. and I know my grandparents' names, but I don't know when they were born and I don't know where they were born. And then she helps trace that back using some of the genealogical databases that she personally has access to, as well okay. as some of resources that are available on the DAR website. Okay. And I did take a look at that, and that's um, a very extensive, um, really, really neat website. Yeah. Um, okay, so it says, um, DAR has local chapters um, where you live and you can and attend meetings, correct? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. Yes. Um, how can you find uh, your closest chapter where you live? So you can just go to DAR.org and find okay. chapters that way. I will say if you're living in the Warren County... Lebanon area, mm -hmm. then the Turtle Creek chapter is the local chapter. Okay, and is that that's where your mother works as the registrar? Yeah. Is that right? Okay, wow, that's neat. How did she get interested in being like the regist registrar for that? Yeah, so she always did a lot of family history research personally for okay. my family. She started out actually doing my dad's family, so her in laws' family. Um, and then she got interested into her own, and now she has written books about her own personal family history. That's awesome. It is really yeah. exciting. Yeah. And um, so when she joined the chapter as a member and then the registrar was leaving her position and say someone asked, is anyone else interested? And right. she said, I would love to help people do their family yeah. re no, research. Awesome. Yeah. I know. Okay. Yeah. So I actually know your mother because I'm <laughs> in the process of applying myself. Um, and she has been extremely helpful getting papers together and finding connections. Because um, like you said, you have to prove um, the lineage between um, the different generations. Right, and there can be no doubt. There can be right. You have to have proof. And that is actually a little bit harder <laughs> than it seems as yes. I'm finding out because there's always a lone person that didn't 
did not have a death certificate, uh, you would be surprised. And there can be multiple reasons for that. Sometimes yeah. in a certain where a person was living, that state may have charged to file yes. a death certificate yeah. and the family yeah. may not have had the money to dedicate to, you know, to file that death certificate. Right. So let's say that you, you don't have an ancestry or a MyHeritage account, so you can't look up kind of your, your direct line. Can you use DAR databases without belonging to DAR, or how does yeah. that work? Okay. Yeah, so there is something called the Genealogical Research System. Okay. And that, you can start from there. It's right at the top, uh, it says GRS, right at the top of the DAR.org website. Okay. And you can go into there, you can look at Revolutionary War records, you can, which the volunteers in the DAR have uh, digitized almost all the records that they have access to. So you can search for those on their website. The Revolutionary War records, the family Bible records. Really? Yes, people wow. have submitted their family Bibles for digitization and then those are on the website as well. Um, so yeah, there's also lots of other different tabs on the website, but that's the main one for family history research. Okay. Yeah. Can you imagine how long it took to digitize all those records? No, and in fact, my mom was actually part of that process. Really? She had to go through and look at thousands upon thousands of digital pages wow. for that, yeah. That's really, really interesting, though. So I, I when I was on the website, um, dar.org, um, it's it had something that popped up and it said that they were celebrating a big milestone and, and it was 2015, yeah. So yes. what was that? That was 125 years. Wow, yeah. Yeah, so okay. 125 years, the organization has been established mm -hmm. and as of 2019, they have over a million members. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow, wow. So what about a male version? Is there a male version of Daughters of America? Sure, American there is Sons of America Revolution. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And actually, and that was founded in 1889. Okay. And then there is actually the Children of the American Revolution. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. Oh, I love that. So my children, would just, I would just have to prove their lineage to me. Right. And then they could be members of the Children of the American Revolution, which was oh. established in 1895. I didn't know that either. Oh, mm -hmm. that's really neat. So um, tell us a little bit about the meetings, like the local meetings when you attend. Yeah, so it is a nonprofit organization. So we focus on things like supporting uh, veterans and mm -hmm. historic preservation, things of that nature. So all of the meetings start out with any news from the national organization. Okay. Um, we have committees within our chapters that do various things in the community. And so those committees will give a report if they have a report to give. Um, we usually get some newsletters, those are read, just brief little minutes about the nation and things that are going on in American history or current news, things upon that nature. Okay. Um, we also have introduction of new members. So if this was your first meeting that you were attending, someone would recognize you and say, welcome to Holly Browning. She's here as a prospective member or as a new member or her application was just approved or okay. anything of that nature. So okay. you can actually start attending meetings while you're just going through the application process. Okay, so you don't have to be approved. You can you can try to yeah. check out a meeting before you decide. Yes, yeah. absolutely. That's nice. Um, so then once we get through that, we have the, what well, I think is the more interesting part of the meeting, and that's the speaker or the presentation. We've had a various, uh, a variety of different types of speakers. We've had the Red Cross come in and they've talked about the services that they perform. Um, we've had veterans come in and talk about their service and what, and they bring in photos and things that they collected in their uniforms and really? yeah, and they talk about their experience. Um, we've also had a Holocaust survivor come in, really? uh, talk to us about her experience and then her experience after the war as well. Wow. Um, so those are always very interesting and then it's always followed by a lunch. That's nice. Yeah. So then yeah, it's like a social nice. part, you know, right. these women that you get to sit down and connect with and have this um, social aspect of the group. That's awesome. So is there a memory that sticks out to you about maybe a favorite speaker or something that really kind of spoke to you? Yes. Um, I always enjoy the military speakers. I find those to be very interesting. Mm -hmm. But the favorite memory that stuck out to me was last fall, the chapter had raised the funds to do a grave marker ceremony. Uh, for a military veteran, okay. and I believe he was in one of the earlier wars of our country, okay. uh, the Revolutionary or War of 1812, okay. um, and he is buried in Mainville, and he didn't have any sort of marking on his, on his tombstone, and so we had raised the funds to get several really wonderful metal um, plaques put onto his 
headstone in recognition of his service mm -hmm. and we had a ceremony for that. We invited his family and his descendants. Um, we had, you know, the full color and arms bearing and all of those different things. Members of the community came out and supported this family in honor of this man's service. That's awesome. It That's was. Really great. I was able to bring my children there and yeah. um, it was a very respectful and distinguished ceremony and mm -hmm. and I really appreciate that we do those types of things for the community members. Absolutely, yeah. Keeping history alive. I mean it's really important. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I've actually seen, I visited a lot of graveyards and cemeteries and I've seen the plaques that it'll say, you know, from the Daughters of the American Revolution yeah. and, and things like, yeah, they do a lot of research and um, that's that's really awesome. So. Um, thank you so much for being here today and telling us all about it. It's a really great organization. And what, what can someone do if they're interested? Just Sure. If someone is interested, they can go to DAR.org, okay. find a local chapter. Okay. Um, and then, like I told you before, um, they can attend meetings before they are certain that they want to go through with this application process. Okay. Um, we, also, we are a service-oriented organization, so they can also join us in one of our service activities. Um, and just participate that way um, while their application is going through. Oh, that's wonderful. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Coming up next, we have Miss Connie with her special story time. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was uh, Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Your hometown source, The Lebanon Channel, is now on YouTube. I know how fortunate I am. Just search City of Lebanon, Ohio to connect with everything that's happening right here. And, and that's going to be an exciting part about this walking tour. Subscribe to receive exclusive local content available only on The Lebanon Channel. Wow, Neil Armstrong's coming to my launch. I was so excited about that. That's the City of Lebanon, Ohio, now on YouTube. That's what makes us so. Uh, Lebanon, Ohio, a great yeah, place buddy. to live. Yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Miss Connie from the Lebanon Public Library. Thank you for joining me for a story. Are you ready to help me say the words to wake up the book bunny? All right, let's say them together. Book bunny, book bunny, it's time for story time to begin. Hello book bunny, can you give our friends a wave? Can you all wave back to the book bunny? You're very happy that they're joining us today, aren't you, Book Bunny? He says, yes, he is. Well, I'm going to set the Book Bunny aside. And do you want to help me sing the words to see what's in our mystery box? All right, let's sing them together. Here we go. Mystery box, mystery box. What's inside the mystery box? Mystery box, mystery box. What's inside the mystery box? All right, let's take a peek inside that mystery box and we will get a clue about what our story is going to be about today. So let's see what's inside the mystery box. We'll set that aside. We'll take off the lid. All right, in the mystery box, there's a riddle. Let's take it out and see if we can get the answer to it. It says, I am sometimes made of sugar and sometimes of oatmeal. Chocolate chip ones taste so good, you might find that you squeal. What tastes so good? Maybe it has oatmeal or chocolate chips in them? Let's see. Well, there's a spatula and look at that. It is a tray of chocolate chip cookies. Yum, yum. I love chocolate chip cookies. But there's something else inside the mystery box that loves cookies also. This is actually an animal that you would find on the farm and it probably would give us some milk to go with the cookies. Are you thinking? Did you guess a cow? Well, today our story is about a cow that loves cookies. 
and the title of the book is The Cow Loves Cookies. In fact, you can even help me say that part of the story. So let's see. Oh, there's our end papers, and you can see it's a picture of the farm where the cow lives. And there's our title page. The cow loves cookies. Whenever farmer feeds the horse, he feeds the horsey hay, of course. The horse just loves to nibble hay. He eats it every single day. But the cow loves cookies. Look at that, she's eating some already. Farmer knows what chickens need. He always gives them chicken feed. They scratch and cluck and peck all day. They love their feed. The horse loves hay, but the cow loves cookies. The farmer feeds each geese their, each morn. He always gives them sweet cracked corn. They honk for joy and flap their wings. They love the corn that farmer brings. Hay for horses, yes indeed. Give those chickens chicken feed. Corn for geese, they love it so. But when it comes to cows, we know that the cow loves cookies. Look, she has her nose in the cookie jar. When farmer feeds the hogs their slop, they love to eat that gooey glop. They oink and snort. They grunt for glee. They eat like pigs, it seems to me. Of course, we know the horse loves hay and chickens love their feed each day. Geese love corn as all geese should. The pigs think slop is mighty good. But cow would never eat that stuff. You couldn't pay the cow enough because the cow loves cookies. Farmer's dog just loves to eat when farmer gives him doggy treats. He gulps and gobbles with delight. He savors every meaty bite. Hay is what the horses need. The chickens all eat chicken feed. The geese munch corn, it tastes so fine. The hogs think slop is just divine. The dog adores his doggy treats. But cow would rather eat things sweet. So, why does the cow love cookies? She and farmer made a deal, and every day they share a meal. Farmer packs a picnic lunch, and when the two sit down to munch, he takes cookies from a tin and cow gives milk to dunk them in. Yum, says farmer. Cow says moo. Cow is happy. Farmer too. They both love milk and cookies. But the duck loves quackers. Oh, what a silly joke. The duck likes quackers instead of crackers. Thank you for joining me for the Cow Loves Cookies. I'll see you the next time. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to The Library Show. If you have any questions about today's show, feel free to give us a call at 932-2665 or you can check any new events online at lebanonlibrary.org. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again next month.